there has to be a reckoning for how intersex people have been treated and ignored and erased. My intersex friends like to say that the term I in LGBTQIA often seems like it stands for invisible. I was born with uh, an intersex trait um, known as androgen insensitivity syndrome. Um, and because I have partial AIS, at birth, I had somewhat atypical genitals, but um, at the time the decision was made to uh, assign me as female. So I was raised as a girl. So intersex is an umbrella term that stands for a wide variety of biological conditions um, where people are born with bodies that don't fit neatly into our understanding of what is male or female, whether it because their chromosomes don't match up with their external genitalia or whether because they have internal genitalia that are discordant with what they believe their, their sex to be. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, up to 1.7% of the world's population have intersex traits. I had undescended testicles that caused me pain. I didn't understand why. And at 13, my mom brought me to Columbia Presbyterian where I was born and I was castrated and put on feminizing hormones. The one area where there could be improvement is for parents um, and kids to be educated not only on the nuts and bolts of the actual surgery themselves, but on you know, how this is gonna affect them at every stage in the future. Really learning about what happened to me without my informed consent, my thorough informed consent, I think made me um, really angry. Medical intervention doesn't just affect a person sexually, but can also cause other bodily issues, like incontinence, as well as a host of mental health problems. All right, welcome back everyone to GMA3 this month. The LGBTQ plus community is celebrating pride amid a backdrop of concern over a rise in anti-LGBTQ plus legislation. Over 500 bills that target the trans community have been proposed in state legislatures this year many of which aim to limit gender-affirming medical care for children under 18, but with the stipulation that surgery would be allowed for intersex minors. The existence of intersex carve-outs and a lot of the legislation banning trans surgeries is, is perplexing um, to a lot of people. Um, it seems, you know, on the surface to be, you know, an example of, of a real hypocrisy. Why are some surgeries allowed on kids who can't consent, where other surgeries on kids who are technically of age to consent not allowed? I think it's problematic when you have politicians defining people's freedoms and bodily autonomy. I think that's really problematic. And so when I was looking at the language of the bills, I was just like, oh, this is actually about maintaining um, the gender binary. And this is actually about reinforcing heterosexuality. ABC News reached out to several conservative state lawmakers, but they all declined or didn't respond to a request for comment. The medical conservative organization, Do No Harm, which helps draft health care legislation, said in a statement in part that its legislation was drafted, quote, based on scientific evidence and expertise from multiple areas. I think we have to acknowledge that what we have done to intersex people, what we have allowed to happen um, is unjust and a flagrant violation of bodily autonomy and bodily integrity. We really have to get to the core of the fact that there is no normal and be more accepting of these bodies because history has shown that the damage that has been wrought on intersex bodies has something that's been ethically questionable and that many people are now considering a human rights violation, um, and I think rightly so. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.